Good evening, folks. Ken Hoven here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in, where are we at? Lenox, Alabama. <laughs> You'll get old and see an owl someday and we'll laugh at you too, okay? They say the mind is the first thing to go. Of all the things I've lost, I think I miss my mind the most. But uh, it's March 22nd, 2000 and something. And you, well, thank you for joining us. A lot of visitors here tonight. We need a lot of work done around here. If you're an electrician, come on down. We got the whole place down by the new motorhome hookup. Eight of them need to be hooked up. Uh, plumber, we got to have a plumber for a while. Hookups to the, on the peninsula, Jeff's cabin, and everything. Josh and Kim visiting. They're in the Marines, a lieutenant in the Marines. Brother, thank you for defending our country, and I'm sorry for our stupid politicians, okay? I just apologize in advance, okay? <laughs> Man, we got some morons in office there. Uh, let's see. Danny, Frankie, Joey, and Amy visiting from where? Brooklyn and Orlando. Same thing. Brooklyn and Orlando. That's quite a commute every day. Gee whiz. Okay. And Sergi, Olga, Jessica, Andrew, Daniel, Michael, Privet, Kakchula. Where are you all from? Harrisonburg, Virginia. Harrisonburg, Virginia. You came down to see Dinosaur Adventure Land. Wow. Right. Well, thank you for coming. You didn't get to see our emus yet, did you? Awesome. Fair enough, yeah. We'll give you. you just got in. We'll just give you all the tour here later. Uh, are you spending the night? Are they in one of the cabins or? Yep. Cabin six. Cabin six. Okay. Is it open? Yeah, we got in and everything's set. Everything's set. Okay, good. Is that enough room in there? Yep. We stay full around here. It's amazing. Uh, we, that's what we're for, you know. People donate to keep us open for free, and we have changed. We changed lives. We had a lost uh, a father and son here today that were lost, taking the tour and really thinking about it. Oh man, you know why? Why am I not believing in creation? It's duh. It's obvious. So thank you for that. Uh, I love giving those tours. Bring a group down to camp at Dinosaur Adventureland or to. Um, uh, Come visit the place. Teachers, bring your students for a field trip. 20th anniversary. Uh, April 20th is our first anniversary. I've only said it wrong about nine times now. Uh, April 20th, our first anniversary of being open. Last April, we looked at the situation and said, you know, we're not done, but we're never going to be done. Let's just open, and we will never be done. So, ever. ever. <laughs> but we get these wild ideas at 2 in the morning. Yeah. Eat, pizza, eat pizza with peanut butter on it. And, Whoa, that'll work. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> so, we got all kinds of cool. You would not believe all the stuff I'd like to do around here. Uh, you see the six by sixes out there? That's for the long neck liftosaurus. I finally got the bolts long enough. I found bolts long enough to bolt it together. That's going to be a cool ride. The kids are going nuts over that. Okay. If you'd like to bring a geode collection, somebody's donating down to Dinosaur Adventureland. It's in Utah. If you're coming this way and you've got room for 30 or 40 pounds of rocks in your car, Load them up, bring them down. The geode collection from uh, there's the phone number you can call Reed and say, I'll bring them, bring the geodes down for our rock collection here. Uh, let's see. Um, anybody know where the world's largest rock group is? Yeah, South Dakota. South Dakota, Mount Rushmore. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Huh. Yeah, world's largest rock group. Do you get it? I didn't get that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, boot camp coming up June 14, 15, 16. We have, so far, for sure, Dennis Swift, going to be speaking on Ica Stones and several other topics. He's great. Uh, Paul Abramson on the Flood Legends. His website has a collection of over 300 Flood Legends that have been discovered. Why would there be 300 Flood Legends? Might have been a flood. Might have been a flood. Duh. Okay, okay. Don Boy is going to be fabulous speaking on Islam and a couple other things. I've got some of his books here. So come down for our boot camp. It's all free, all based on just... Uh, Donations, just don't help donate to keep us going. We need a lot of rope to build some stuff and some cargo nets for the obstacle course we're doing. Uh, and for the playground, we need a net source and a rope source, more license plates. Sean, we showed the picture yesterday, did a great job. You painted the bench, got the bench painted. Yeah, awesome. And there's Sean waiting for the perfect woman. Yeah, I'll probably be extinct by then. How many guys, single guys, do we have here? We got to get some girls down here. <laughs> Zoom in, zoom in, show him. <laughs> zoom in, zoom in and show him, and we'll see why. Is that what you're saying? No. Huh? Advertise. Advertise. Uh, we have each of the single guys with a little sign for sale. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Come take your pick. <laughs> we are built, developing the pavilion that was already here into a tiki hut kind of thing. If you were to get a whole bunch of bamboo and stuff, you can get bamboo for free. <laughs> Palm leaves we're having a hard time finding. But playground equipment, we're doing a bunch of stuff around here. We want this to be an awesome place where parents come. Maybe see if the military, any cargo nets of any kind. Uh, we, we need a bunch, okay? Uh, if you'd like to help us, join our 777 Club. That's real simple. Absolutely no pressure. You'll probably never get a letter from us. 
But we like if you want to go to drdino.com, go to donate now, and you can become a member if you donate a dollar a day, 31 bucks a month, and say, I want to help keep that place open for and keep them expanding and winning more souls. Okay, it doesn't affect my paycheck at all. I am retired and I don't get any more if we get more money in here. I just get the same amount every week, 20 bucks, and <laughs> and I spend all of it back on the camp. Yeah, would make any checks to CSE. Okay, let's see. Uh, now, <laughs> slide number 726, Alt-DV, 726, Enter. Tonight we're going to try to cover another session of what was on my video series. Uh, years ago, for many years, I did the Creation Seminar series. I redid it probably 20 times. I put it in sequence, things I wanted to cover. The first video called The Age of the Earth. How old is this earth? The second one is uh, upside down. The Garden of Eden, what was it like? The third one's upside down. Dinosaurs and the Bible, where do dinosaurs fit in? And the fourth one's upside down. Maybe the whole case is upside down. Lies in the textbooks. We are updating all of this. I kept updating it for years, and the, this has not been redone in a while, so we're going to redo it and greatly expand it. I'm going to kick every dog and chase every rabbit, and we're going to get her said, okay? So tonight we're going to talk about why the Earth cannot possibly be billions of years old. Part one, uh, we're going to cover this, the biblical first and then get into the second session, maybe tomorrow, about the scientific reasons why it cannot possibly be billions of years old. I wrote a book called What on Earth is About to Happen, for Heaven's Sake, where we cover the three basic things that the scoffers are ignorant of, the creation, the flood, and the end of the world. I did a debate today with a, a student, college student who's uh, studying is going to major in cell biology, and you wanted to debate me. So that's, is that posted now already, Steve? Steve went outside, okay. I think they already posted it. I get to do debates probably one or two a week. I'd love to do more. Uh, anyway, the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. There are plenty of them. How many have ever met one? A scoffer who walks after his lust, doesn't want the Bible to be true. Yeah, anything, anything to get rid of the Bible, okay. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Willingly ignorant. I don't speak Greek or Hebrew, but I understand that means dumb on purpose. Willingly ignorant. Deliberately dumb. Okay? Of three things. Number one, that by the word of God the heavens were of old. And heaven is plural. Genesis 1 1, heaven is singular. Good reason for that. We'll cover some, some other time. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. How can the earth be out of the water and in the water? We'll cover that when we get to the Garden of Eden. Second thing they're ignorant of is the flood, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. How many took the tour today and got to see about the, the lines of strata that are made? You all took the tour, several of you did, okay? Uh, the flood explains all the geologic strata that we have, not millions of years of evolution. Oh, I forgot to turn this thing up for the atheists. I do this all the time to, so you can understand. This will make multiple layers in just a matter of a few minutes, not millions of years, okay? Out of, out of nothing. You, for those, if you can't focus right here, focus on this. Stop drooling. Can we oh. make a big one of those, like... Yeah, we need, you need huge ones, yeah, okay. But the scoffers are ignorant of the creation. Secondly, they're ignorant of the flood. And thirdly, the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, that would be the word of God, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the scoffers are ignorant of three things. Number one, the creation. They don't want to admit God created the world. Number two, the flood that destroyed the world. They don't want to admit God has authority to judge his creation. But this is his world and he can wreck it if he wants. And they sure don't want to admit he's coming again for another judgment. But he's coming. So, the evolutionist answer to the question, who created it? Well, the Big Bang. When was it created? Billions of years ago. Why? No reason. What on earth is about to happen? We'll keep evolving until we become gods. Those are the atheist typical answers of what these questions would be. Here's what I believe. I believe all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I believe the Bible from cover to cover. I don't have it here. It's up in my house. I even believe the cover. Mine says Kent Hovind on that. I believe that. And one of our jobs is to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks a reason of the hope that's in us. 
And I think in the last 200 years, the Christians have not done a good job of answering the skeptics and scoffers, and we've allowed them to take over the school system and the legal system and many people's whole thinking process is based on that dumb religion of evolution. So here's what I'm going to try to accomplish. Number one, I want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. Number two, if you're not saved, I'm going to try to get you converted. I'll tell you right up front, I'm after you. Okay? And number three, if you're saved and not doing much for the Lord, I'm going to try to make you uncomfortable. Everybody can find something to do. A guy called me today. He said, Brother Hovind, I saw your seminar, and you said, everybody can do something. Even the worst of you can serve as bad examples. He said, I decided that's what I've been doing. I'm done doing that. I'm going to start being a good example <laughs> of a phone call today. Okay. I live in the town of Lenox, Alabama, population 30. I think we have more at the camp than they do in the town. <laughs> it's getting close. More, more in his room than they do in the town. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're straight north of Pensacola. We're building dinosaur adventure land. Uh, we have the, I have the uh, pink, blue dinosaur. Cindy has the pink one. And when we close the gates, our hands are holding us. That's, that's, so, that's so sweet. Okay. We have all kinds of dinosaurs here. We had another one. This one was out front by the gate, and some rednecks came and took it out in the woods to go hunting, I guess. We can't find it. Uh, you got to be brave to shoot a piece of tin. Okay. So why do we do all this? To change people's worldview. Your worldview is the way you view the world. The humanists teach the kids, you are just an animal, and you share a common heritage with earthworms. This is the stuff kids face every day. You're nothing but an animal. Well then, where do you get the rules? How do you tell right from wrong? If we are just an animal, is, is there any such thing as right or wrong? And how do you tell? I told the story before about the one atheist I was debating, and uh, I asked him, I said, look, if you're an evolutionist, how do you tell right from wrong? He said, well, I decide what's right and wrong. He said, I'm the god of my own universe. I said, I'm glad to hear about that because I'm going to shoot you in five minutes. <laughs> he, said, he said, you can't do that. I said, well, sure I can. I'm the God of my own universe, and I decided I should shoot you. <laughs> What's wrong with that logic if evolution is true? Hmm? Where are the rules? Is man just an animal? So how old is this earth anyway? We're going to give the biblical answer first, and then we're going to get into the scientific answer. Yes, ma'am. What about all this talk about self-esteem? Self-esteem? Hey, kid, you're a worm. Yeah. And when you die, that's it. <laughs> okay. Pretty hard to have self-esteem. Read, go, Google Jeffrey Dahmer's testimony. Jeffrey Dahmer killed uh, how many people? Jeffrey Dahmer's testimony. Don't we're not right now, Sean. Oh. Gee whiz, <laughs> Sean, what grade are you in? <laughs> hey, girls, girls, cancel the idea about finding a wife for Sean. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer killed how many people? Did he kill a bunch of them? Okay, He's a mass murderer. Okay. His dad sent in my videotapes to their prison, and he watched him and got saved. And he shares his testimony about how those... He, sa he said, I thought I was just an animal from what I was taught in school. He said, evolution made me think I'm nothing but an animal. Yeah. So, we're going to give a biblical answer and a scientific answer. First, I want to give you a philosophical concept here. If you went scuba diving, and you found a treasure chest full of gold coins, and I asked you the simple question, when did the boat sink? You say, I don't know. Well, look at the dates on the coins. If there's a coin in there from 1750, you would find the youngest coin in the box, and you know the boat sank after that. How many cannot figure that out? Need a little help on that one. The limiting factor is the youngest coin, not the oldest coin. So there are hundreds of ways to look at the earth and try to figure out how old it is. Any of the young ones are the limiting factors. Yeah. If I told you this remote control was built uh, 900 years ago, you'd say, no, I don't believe that. I mean, come on, it's got co electronic components in there that weren't invented until the last 40 years. I think through process of elimination, we could limit it down to less than 40 and prove my 900 year date wrong, couldn't we? Yes. Pretty easily. I don't know when it was made, and I just lost interest, I don't care. But I think it's made in the last 40 years. So how old's the earth? Let's look at some of the evidences. When they find a dinosaur bone, you'll notice they don't have a date on them. You dig up a bone, it does not say made by a dinosaur in 70 million BC in Taiwan. They don't say that. So how do you tell the age of a fossil? 
The kid today, I was debating his whole evidence is, we've got fossils that we know they're millions of years old. Do they talk? How, how do you know they're millions of years old? You're assigning a date to them. They're not telling you that. The bones don't have dates on them and they don't talk. So, let's look at what the Bible says. In the beginning, well, that would be the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth, and heaven is singular if you got a good Bible. If it's plural, throw that Bible away and get a King James, okay? Now, Colossians tells us, by him, talking about Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. See, Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. I don't understand that. A guy called me today and said, can you explain the Trinity? I said, no, I can show it to you. I can't explain it to you. I can show you beauty, but I can't explain it to you. I can show you gravity. But I can't explain. Nobody in the world knows what gravity is. Give me a jar of it and paint it red. Nobody knows what light is. We know what it does. We can tell you a lot of things about it. We don't know what it is. What's a jar of light weigh? Yeah. And where does it go when it goes out? And why do I keep have, why do I have to keep paying to buy more? The jar of light is very light. Why don't I just light up the room and, and shut the switch off and leave it lit? Hello. So I can't explain the Trinity. I can tell you the Bible clearly teaches it. Acts 20, 28 says, uh, God purchased the church with his own blood. Yeah, Jehovah's Witness Bible changed it with the blood of his own. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jehovah's Witness Bible changed that one. They said the Word was a God. Anyway, that's another story, the Trinity. So Jesus said in Matthew 19, 4, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Here's Jesus telling us that was the beginning when God made male and female. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, by the way. Uh, Mark, Mark chapter 10. From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Here we are. Jesus is telling us clearly that was the beginning of the creation. And the Bible tells us clearly in Romans 5, by death, by man came death. Man brought death into the world. Nothing died till Adam sinned. First Corinthians repeats it. Since by man came death, by man came the resurrection. That would be Jesus. In Adam all die. The Bible is real clear. Adam was the first man. And his name was Adam. And Eve is the mother of all living. So, what does the Bible teach about the age of the earth? Well, the Bible says Adam was 130 when Seth was born. Seth was 105 when Enos was born. Enos was 90 when Canaan was born. So being a mathematician, I said, well, let's make a graph. And I did. Here's one right here. The chart of how old they were when their kid was born and how long they lived afterwards. The Bible says Adam lived 800 years after he begat Seth and begat sons and daughters. How many kids could you have in 800 years? A lot. People say, who did Adam's sons marry? Married sisters. You could have a lot of kids in 800 years. You see, married sisters, calm down. First place, there's no other choice. Okay. Secondly, who would you report them to? Your brother who married his own sister too? There were no laws against it until 2,500 years later. We'll see that in a little bit here. When God made laws, don't marry close kin. Adam married his rib, for heaven's sake. It's not a problem. But point being, if you look at the dates in the Bible and add them all up, or you can buy these charts, get a set of them for placemats for your table when skeptic friends come for lunch. You can really stir up a conversation. Especially when you say, hey, look on the back. Grand Canyon had to form in a few weeks, not millions of years. Here's all the evidence. Well, Grand Canyon is their favorite. You know, they think that's it. You know, the proof of, the, of an old earth. Okay. But the Bible dates will add up to approximately 4,000 B.C. This has been done for centuries. Many people have put them together. Bishop Usher did the 4004 B.C. I don't know if you can get that close. One guy said, oh yeah, it was 4004 B.C., October 23rd at 2 in the afternoon. I really don't think you'd get that close. I think it was Adam was made in the afternoon, because it was just before Eve. It's the only clue I found. And I think I figured out why God made Adam first. It's because he didn't want any advice on how to do it. But the dates add up to about 4,000 B.C. Adam, Cain, and Abel are walking by the garden one day, and Cain said, Dad, look at that beautiful garden. He said, yeah, son, that's beautiful. That's the Garden of Eden. He said, well, Dad, why don't we live in there? He said, we used to live in there, son, but your mother ate us out of house and home. Oh, <laughs> oh, <I was> <laughs> there you go. 
go point a finger. I, I love Adam and Eve jokes. I was telling a bunch of Adam and Eve jokes. This lady said, and where would you men be without us women? I said, in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be lonely. It wouldn't be worth it. Okay. Uh, anyway, so almost all the new textbooks are calling it BCE instead of BC. They've changed it. BCE means before the common era. If they say before Christ, some kid might say, and teacher, who's Christ? They don't want to talk about that in school. So you look at all the textbooks. They've changed it. BCE, before the common era. Anyway, textbook says the earth is billions of years old. Jesus clearly said the creation of Adam was the beginning. So, was he lying? Did he not understand modern science? Or could he have been right? The kid today gave three choices, none of which were correct. And I pointed that out. It's like saying, are elephants orange or elephants pink? Uh, there's, there's more options than that. They're gray. Could, it, could Jesus have been right? Could that, in the beginning, could that actually be telling the scientific answer to the question? Thou, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. Hebrews chapter 1. So how old is the earth? Well, it's pretty simple. The Bible dates that up to about 4,000 BC, and now it's been 2,000 years since Christ, so approximately 6,000 years would be the age of the earth. So the atheists always ask me, who did Adam's sons marry? It says, Cain went out from the presence of, Nod, uh, presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, and he knew his wife. It doesn't say he found her there. So Seth and his brothers, all of them, had to marry sisters. The evolutionists are the ones who've got a problem with this. They believe 18 or 20 billion years ago, they've changed it now to 13.772 billion years ago. <laughs> All the matter in the universe was squeezed into a dot smaller than a period on a page. And that dot contained everybody's wife and everybody's husband and all the planets and all the animals and all the plants and everything. That's a crowded dot. Wow, yeah. And heavy. Wow. And hot. It had, to contain, it had to contain all the heat that is currently in all the universe. What's the total heat of all the stars? <sighs> Pretty warm. Yeah. <laughs> Earth is thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago. Earth began as a hot ball of rock. This is what's taught in the books. They're right all over the shelves here. Read them. And millions of years of torrential rains created the oceans. And swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Boy, it sure is. It don't even happen. That's how slow it is. 3.5 billion years ago, the first living organisms appeared. Kids have to face this every day. Probably worse in, the, in Russia, where you're from, right? It's evolution propaganda in all the textbooks. Scientists cracked the 40-year-old DNA puzzle and point to hot soup as the origin of life. Primordial soup is where life began. Wow, science daily. I would call that fairy tale daily, okay? The first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. So according to their theory, 13.772 billion years ago, they've changed the number quite a few times, uh, the earth formed and then or the Big Bang took place where nothing exploded. And then the earth cooled down and it rained on the rocks for millions of years and turned them into soup and the soup came alive three billion years ago. So great, 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 great grandpa was soup. There he is. So one atheist was mad at me. He said, Hovan, there's hundreds of varieties of dogs in the world. Do you think all those dogs came from just two dogs on Noah's Ark? I said, well, sir, yes, that is what I believe, but that's nothing compared to what you believe. You believe all those dogs came from a rock. I was debating one atheist one time, and he said, we do not believe we came from a rock. I said, well, where do we come from? He said, we came from a macro molecule. I said, where did that come from? He said, from the oceans, from the prebiotic soup. I said, and where did the minerals in the ocean water come from? He said, well, it rained on the rocks for millions of years. It was cool. You could see it slowly dawning on him. I really do believe I come from a rock, don't I? Yes, you do. I don't see how they can drive on the highway that's made out of their ancestors. Show some respect. Gee whiz. Who did Adam's sons marry? Well, Adam lived after he begot Seth 800 years and had sons and daughters. So gee whiz. 800 years, you could have a lot of kids. Jim Bob Duggar is a friend of mine. He had 20, what, 19 kids in 23 years? Oh, wow. Pretty good average. Wow. Yeah. 
Who did they marry? Well, they married sisters. There's no other choice. Who would you report them to? And there are no laws against it for 2,500 years. And Adam married his own rib, so it's not a problem. So, Bible dates are interesting. If you look at the chart, you'll see things you'll never see just reading the Bible. Adam lived long enough to meet Noah's daddy. Imagine a family reunion back in those days. All right, everybody hop on the camel. We're going to go visit great, 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 great grandpa Adam. And he's going to tell us what it was like in the Garden of Eden before the first woman ate the first man out of house and home. Anyway, after the flood, Noah's son Shem had a baby and named him Arphaxad. I've always wondered, why would anybody name a kid Arphaxad? Can't you see the kid in kindergarten? What's your name, son? Arphaxad? Do you know how to spell it? No. Nobody does. <laughs> but our Shem, his daddy, lived long enough to meet Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whoa. Pharaoh said to Jacob, how old are you? He said, I'm 130. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers. Here's Jacob saying, I'm 130, but this is nothing compared to my ancestors. What's he mean by that? Well, Jacob could have probably known Shem, Arphaxad, Selah, and Eber. And if you're 130, but you know a 600-year-old down the street, you just don't feel so old anymore. So, textbook says it's billions of years old. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Bible dates add up to 6,000. Was Jesus lying? Was he stupid? Or was he right? Somebody is wrong. The Bible dates clearly add up to 6,000, roughly. Plus or minus maybe 50 years, okay? Textbooks say billions of years, millions of years ago, billions of years ago. Even some people who claim to be Christian are claiming the earth is billions of years old. I debated Hugh Ross, reasons to heave, or reasons to believe. Uh, he said, oh yeah, the earth is billions of years old. God needed billions of years to get it just right. My God didn't need any time at all. He could do it in for two nanoseconds. Doesn't need billions of years. Don Stoner, Gerald Schroeder, the Navigator's Bible Study Group, helped my get my brother saved to help get me led to the Lord. James Dobson. was he changed. Did he change? So. Yeah, he needs to. The Dake Study Bible, the Schofield Bible, Pat Robertson, John Ankerberg. I was on his program several times. He thinks the earth is millions of years old. Benny Hinn. Did you debate Pat Robertson? I didn't. I would on this topic. Gee whiz, yeah. <laughs> Hank Hanegraaff, Chuck Colson, Norman, Billy Graham. Billy Graham's, Billy Graham's older brother watched my videos and became a young earth creationist and tried to convince Billy to change. I don't know. He knows better now, okay, but, uh, okay. So, textbook says, billions of years ago, millions of years ago, somebody is clearly wrong on this, clearly wrong, okay? Death reigned from Adam to Moses, by man came death. Why is there death and suffering in the world? Think about it from an evolutionist perspective. Death and suffering is how we get ahead. One animal evolves a little better than the rest. Now, what has to happen to the inferiors to make this work? They all got to die, don't they? This is Adolf Hitler 101. Hitler became a strong believer in evolution, even though he was a nominal Catholic. He thought evolution was true. He said, man, we can speed up the process. Let's just find the inferior races and kill them. Hitler had a list he was going on. We'll show you later when I get into the dangers of evolution. Why is that theory not just dumb but dangerous? So the Bible says man brought death into the world. Evolution says death brought man into the world. Complete opposite. Somebody's wrong. I'm going to try to show in this series who it is. Who cares about the age of the earth? Well, the credibility of the book of Genesis is clearly at stake. If the earth is billions of years old, you can trash Genesis. So the question is simple. Can the average person read it and understand it, or do we have to have some guru tell us what it means? I told Hugh Ross, I said, if 5,000 people read the book of Genesis with no, nobody telling them anything, just read the book, nobody would come up with your theory. Nobody. Credibility of Jesus is at stake. He quoted Genesis 25 times. So if the earth is billions of years old, that would make Jesus a liar. Get the Defender Study Bible. How much? We got 90 bucks or something? or. 70 bucks. They're fabulous, uh, but it's kind of big, you know, take a wheelbarrow to carry it, but fabulous book. He says, covers uh, uh, all the quotations by Jesus. Nearly every other book in the Bible refers to Genesis 200 times in the New Testament alone. 
The evolutionists really care about this topic. Because if you try to take away billions of years, it's like pulling a pacifier out of a baby's mouth. They will scream and holler. Keep in mind, the coin's in the box. One proof of a young earth closes the case. Isn't that the way it is in any court of law? If you have one proof of innocence, they got 40 things of evidence pointing to you being guilty, but you've got proof you weren't even at the scene. Oh, case closed. You're done. Go home. One proof of innocence. One scientific proof of a young earth is all you need. Just one. Closes the case. That's the youngest coin in the box. Jesus said, had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. He wrote of me. So the Bible clearly says 6,000. Now there are those who try to teach, maybe there's a gap between the first two verses. How many have ever heard of the gap theory? I was a brand new Christian, got a Schofield Bible. It's right there. One of these two shelves behind some of the fossils. My preacher gave me the Schofield reference edition, and he taught there's a gap between verse 1 and verse 2, and I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Brand new Christian, 16, it's in the Schofield Bible, it's got to be true. Or could the days be millions of years apiece? That's what Hugh Ross, Hugh Ross teaches. Each day is a long period of time. Huh. Well, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. By him were all things created. So Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, and he said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Adam and Eve. And from the beginning of the creation, God made them. And death was brought into the world by man. We went over this earlier. And the first man was Adam, and Eve's the mother of all living, and Adam's 130. I mean, you, you, it's simple to do. The dates in the Bible teach about 6,000. Could there be a gap between the first two verses? Many Christians are ignorant of the creation and the flood. They teach what's called the gap theory. Now, in Genesis 1-5, in a King James Bible, it says it was the first day. Many other versions have changed it. You should compare the King James to the NIV or the, uh, all the new Bible versions. i got a whole herd of them up here. Uh, Satan's goal, he always comes along and takes, out, takes away the Word of God. He does this all the time, tries to remove it. Like, for instance, the reviled substandard perversion. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning. One day. Well, hold it. What happened to the first day? Is there a difference between the first day and just one day? Yeah. yeah. Almost all the new Bible versions are calling it one day, one day, one day, one day. How many one days are there? All of them? Any of them? How many the first days are there? One. One. They're trying to push what's called the gap theory, where they put billions of years between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. Schofield, uh, uh, J. Sidlow Baxter. Is there a great big huge blue book about this fat up here someplace called that corner. Explore the Book? Top corner, on your left. On my left? Okay. Anyway, when I went to Bible college, this is the one I had to read. And they said, between the first two verses of Genesis, there is ample scope for all the geologic eras. He says there was a pre-Adamite rebellion. Slow down, calm down. Was anybody here before Adam? No. That's what they teach. The people before Adam rebelled. And the judgment of Lucifer took place. Well, now, when did Lucifer get judged? When did Lucifer fall? Christians had better get a good handle on these two topics, because many people are falling for this stupid gap theory and this day-age theory because of it. Here's what happened. A guy named James Hutton from Scotland wrote a book, The Theory of the Earth, in 1795. He said, the earth is much older than everybody thinks. And Christians panicked. A, a brilliant Bible scholar, a teacher in Scotland, named Thomas Chalmers, panicked over this. He said, wow, the earth is millions of years old. How do we make the Bible say this? Wow. Thomas, calm down. You don't need to make the Bible say that. He's wrong. It's not millions of years old. But they thought it was. They thought science had proven it. Now we got to make the Bible fit currently accepted science. So Thomas Chalmers said there's a gap between the first two verses. He did that in 1814. Christians fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And then when Darwin's book came out in 1859, people said, oh, well, no problem. Nobody opposed Darwinism like they should have because of that stupid gap theory. <coughs> Here's what they say. Well, the Bible says the earth was tohu wa bohu, which means unformed and unfilled. It does not mean destroyed, by the way. It says the earth was without form and void. That's Genesis 1-2. The tohu is used 20 times in the Old Testament with 10 different meanings. Ye seek me in vain. That's tohu. 
He stretcheth forth the earth over the empty place. That's tohu. You can get more on that in uh, this book here, Unformed, Unfilled, Compilation of the Gap Theory. We used to sell that one. And I'm making notes, see if you can find where that is available. And let's put that in our bookstore too. It's fabulous. Unformed, Unfilled by Weston Fields. Fabulous book. Uh, I wrote a booklet about it. We have mine online, don't we, Steve? Yes. Or... E-book. Yes, e-book. E as an e-book about the gap theory, if you want to get more on that. See, this house is unformed and unfilled. Nobody's living in it and it's not formed yet. Does that mean it's been destroyed? No. So something can be unformed and unfilled and not be destroyed. It's just not done yet. There's one verse in Jeremiah where it says the earth was without form and void. And in that case, it had been destroyed. It said, the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains, they trembled. There was no man. The birds of heaven were fled. Well, hold it. Birds weren't made till day five. This passage has nothing to do with the creation. It's talking about Jeremiah seeing a place that had been destroyed. This house is unformed and unfilled too. The Bible says in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. This is part of the Ten Commandments. God wrote this on a rock with his finger, handed it to Moses. He doesn't stutter. The question is not what does it say, the question is do you believe what it says? It says clearly he made everything in six days and it says he rested the seventh day. If there's a gap between verse 1 and 2, that's not the seventh day. It's the, you know, bazillionth day. Exodus 31, God repeats himself. It's a sign, talking about the Sabbath, between me and the children of Israel forever. In six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested. That was the seventh day. Genesis 2-2, on the seventh day God ended his work. He rested on the seventh day. Genesis 2-3, he blessed the seventh day. Hebrews 4, in a certain place he spake of the, second, the seventh day. All through the Bible it's called that. And the Bible says one man, Adam, brought death into the world, and death reigned from Adam to Moses, and by man came death. That's what it says, in Adam all die. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Atheists say, well, hold it, didn't plants die before man? You've got to first of all decide if plants are alive. In the biblical sense, they're not. They don't have the breath of life like we do. Everybody, I think, agrees there's something different between plants and animals. God made the plants to be a complex, self-replicating food source. Insects may not be considered alive in the biblical sense. They're a food source. Self-replicating food source. Pretty cool. Anyway, they say, well, didn't God tell Adam to replenish the earth? Yeah, he sure did. And they'll say, see, replenish means to fill it again. Here's the dictionary right there. To fill again, make full again. Well, that's what the word means today. It didn't always mean that. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. It's the Hebrew word male, which means fill. So the King James translators in 1611 translated it replenish. Perfectly correct way to do it. Because in 1611, the word replenish simply meant fill. In 1650, a second definition was added to the dictionary. Fill again. For hundreds of years, the word simply meant fill. Would you please replenish my glass? That means fill it. Today, if I use the word replenish, I'm indicating, would you please fill it again? But that's not what it meant in 1611. Oh, Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn. Okay. A year later, the brothers came back. He commanded the men to fill the sacks with food. Why didn't he say replenish? They were filling them again. Here's what happened. 1828 Dictionary, the green one up there on the shelf. Replenish means to fill. Secondary meaning. Replenish, to recover former fullness. That was added by Bacon, Francis Bacon, in 1650. After the King James. Ah. So fill is the primary meaning. Refill is the secondary meaning. Watch what happened now. Satan is slick how he did this. In 1891... Replenish meant fill, secondary meaning recover former fullness. Fill, recover former fullness. 1892, the next year, Darwin's theory had become very popular during that 40-year span, or 30-year span, so they switched the order. Now replenish meant fill again, but they still kept the primary meaning to fill, but it's now secondary meaning. Pretty slick. They switched it. Huh. 18, 1989 dictionary, they dropped the original meaning altogether. 
Fill again. Tricky. Yeah. <laughs> English words change meanings. To fill. To replenish. To fill up again. Doesn't even mention the original real meaning of the word. In my days, the word cool meant not hot. And gay meant happy. English words change meanings. Don't they? Yeah. James 2. Thou you have respect him that weareth the gay clothing. What would that mean today? Paul said, I would, have, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. One lady told me that was her life first, why she never married. I would not have you ignorant, brethren. But I purposed to come unto you, but was, but was let hitherto. The word let used to mean hindered. Paul said, I wanted to come, but I was let. I was hindered. I couldn't come. Today, let means exactly the opposite. God's promised he would preserve his word forever. His word is settled in heaven. He did not promise to preserve our language. Our language changes meanings, God's word. And so when God said replenish the earth, it simply meant fill. We can prove that again from Ezekiel 28. Thus saith the Lord, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This is talking about Lucifer the devil. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. It talks about the different stones here. In the day that thou wast created. Well, now hold it. If Lucifer was in Eden, and he was covered with these beautiful stones, and he was perfect until iniquity was found in him. They're trying to tell me that Lucifer fell from heaven in that gap. Yet the Bible says clearly, thou wast perfect from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. And he was in the Garden of Eden, and he's still perfect. Garden of Eden wasn't made till day six. Lucifer couldn't fall from heaven between verse 1 and verse 2. Can't be a gap. Can't be. Ezekiel 28, Thus saith the Lord, because thy heart was lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. He said, with thy wisdom and thy riches and that understanding, you can read the whole passage, his heart was lifted up because of his beauty. I cover this on one of my seminars. This is why people fall, same reasons. They get rich, they get, they're beautiful, they're handsome, they're strong, and it goes to their head. Okay. Bible says in Job, all the sons of God shouted for joy when the foundations of the earth were laid. Well, when was that? I think it's day three when he made the dry land appear. So if all the sons of God, including all the angels, Lucifer, all of them were excited. Wow, God's making something on the earth. The dry land appeared. He made all the water run into the oceans and the dry land came up. Dry land appeared. Yeah. And everybody, this happened on the third day. So all best I can figure out, the angels had to be made on day one or two. God saw everything and it was very good. Yes, sir. Uh, God is out of time with us, right? He does, he's not stuck in time. We are. Right. So are the angels also? No, they're stuck in time. They're stuck in time? They're stuck in time, I think. They were part of the creation. God saw everything, and it was very good on day six. Well, then Lucifer hadn't fallen yet, had he? That destroys the gap theory. People aren't created and made different words, different meanings. Well, they're different words, but they don't have different meanings. God said, let us make man in our image. So he created man in his image. Huh. Use both words. God created man in the likeness of God, made he him. Use both words. Same thing. More on video seven about that. They say, well, didn't God have to remake the earth? No, he didn't remake the earth. He said, I saw a new heaven. This is Revelation, the end of the Bible. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. We're still living on the first one. It got rearranged at the flood a little bit, but this is still the first one. And the angels were made to be ministering spirits for those who are heirs of salvation. you got guardian angels. If you're saved, mine retire every six months. They say, Lord, have you seen him drive? Would you please give me somebody else to guard? Lord, please. <laughs> Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. The beginning. So when did Satan fall? Well, we know everything was made in six days. Everything. We know Satan was created. We know Satan was in Eden until he sinned. We know Eden was made on day six. We know angels were made to be ministering spirits. Why would God make them millions of years before man? We know Satan and the angels rejoiced when the foundations of the earth were laid. The foundations were laid on day three. We know everything was very good at the end of day six. And we know Adam was 130 when Seth was born. 
We know Cain and Abel were born before that, but we don't have any dates. The creation of Adam, the first man, was the beginning. There was no death till Adam sinned. And Genesis 1-5 says it was the first day. And Satan wanted to be a, ascend above the stars. They weren't made till day four. Huh. So you add up the dates, you're going to find out Satan probably fell about a hundred years after the creation. Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden. They have Cain and Abel. Let's say Cain and Abel are 20 years old. Cain kills Abel. A few more years later, they have Seth at age 130. That's just my guess. He probably spent a hundred years in that garden. Certainly, Satan didn't fall before the creation, is my point. What happened? Scottish theologian and Masonic Lodge member named Thomas Chalmers invented the gap theory in 1814. It's not the historical position of the church. It violates many scriptures. The Schofield Bible really spread it around like crazy. It puts death before sin. Has Satan fall before day seven? Was there death before sin? Ask a gap theorist this question. Was Satan already the god of this world when God gave Adam dominion? That's giving two people title, isn't it? Legal problem there. There are thousands of species of living animals found as fossils. Did God have to recreate those? When God saw everything was very good, was Satan evil when God said that? Hmm? Would Noah's flood have erased all evidence of the billions of years in the gap theory? What did God mean in Exodus 20 where he said it was six days the Lord made heaven and earth? Heaven and earth. Does everyone who reads the Bible need some guru to tell them what it means? Why can the word let change meaning in 400 years, but the word replenish cannot? Why do we need a gap? What took place during this time? Why do you need a gap? Everything can be explained with Noah's flood. Why does Revelation say it was the first earth? And was Adam really the first man? So, we cover more on the gap theory in my booklet, the gap theory, if you want to get all the details on that. The gap theory violates many scriptures. Then you have a second theory, we'll go through real quickly here and we'll quit. The Living Bible says, Let the earth burst forth with every sort of grass and seed-bearing plant and the fruit trees. All this occurred on the third day, but they have a footnote at the bottom that says literally, literally this is a period of time. How many have ever heard that compromise that maybe the days are long periods of time? Yeah. They'll say Psalm 90 says a thousand years is like a day. Same thing in 2 Peter. One day is like a thousand years. Yeah, I agree. Both of those verses say thousand, not million or billion. Right? Both of them. Thousand, not million or billion. The day-age theory was introduced six years later by an Anglican theologian named George Faber. He came along and said, maybe the, maybe the days represent long time. That's what Hugh Ross believes. Here's the um, Farrar Fenton Bible right up here on the shelf. 1903. Look at his Genesis chapter 1. You ready? By periods, God created that which produced the solar systems, then that which produced the earth. Does that sound like Genesis 1-1? No. How about verse 5? This was the close in the dawn of the first age, the close in the dawn of the second age. This dude was on some good medication. <laughs> he needs more medication, doesn't yeah. he? Okay. Where was his marijuana crop? Now, Genesis 1, God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, and fruit trees on the third day. Watch this carefully. On the fourth day, he made the sun, moon, and stars. Excuse me. Don't you think maybe the grass and the trees are going to need the sun before waiting thousands or millions of years? They could make it one day, but I don't think they could make it millions of years with no sun. The birds are made on day five, and they pollinate the plants and insects. Birds and insects made on day five. How are those plants going to make it from day three with no sun, no insects, no birds? The day-age theory is dumb. One professor of Hebrew said, as far as I know, there's no professor of Hebrew who does not believe that the writers intended to convey six days the same as the days we have now, 24-hour days. Or to put it negatively, the days of creation cannot be long, to be long periods of time. Nobody believes that. Who knows Hebrew, he said. Or they don't believe the flood to be a local Mesopotamian flood. Those are not taken seriously. So the professors of Hebrew know that's what the text teaches, not millions of years. The word yam is used in the Hebrew Bible, in Hebrew, 1,500 times in the King James. 
translated as day, a normal 24-hour day. One time, it means a 12-hour day. Like Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? Don't we do exactly that same thing today? We call a day the 24-hour period, and we also call the day the 12-hour period, day and night. Not, it's, it's, either way, it's not millions of years. He was three days without sight, and neither did eat or drink. Does that mean 3,000 years, 3 million years? There are no verses in the Bible where the word yam means anything other than a normal 24-hour day. Especially when it's modified with a number, like second day, third day. Now it's just airtight case. So the old earth versus young earth, very different. We cover all this in our booklet, you can get the gap theory. Somebody is seriously wrong about this. The, the, the days cannot be billions of years each for multiple scientific reasons, and there's no need for them at all. Get the book about the gap theory or my little book. Uh, this has a great effect, though, on E.O. Wilson, who was a great evolutionist here. He said, as were many persons from Alabama, I was a born-again Christian. When I was 15, I entered the Southern Baptist Church with great fervor and interest in the fundamentalist religion. I left at 17 when I got to the University of Alabama and heard about evolution. One kid wrote me, he said, Dr. Hoven, until I went to college, my faith in God was sound. But my college history class helped to destroy that faith. And how many calls do we get, people who had their faith destroyed in college, and our videos help them? That's what we're trying to do. He said, I started to doubt the Bible and God's word. I even started to doubt Jesus was truly God's son and that he died and rose from my sins. My best friend showed me your tapes, and I was in awe of what I saw. Everything I thought I knew about God was changed. There's a guy named Moses Mordecai Marx Levy, better known as Karl Marx. When he was 17, he wrote a beautiful paper telling of how much he loved the Lord. Then he went off to college, and one of his college professors destroyed his faith. He turned his back on God, developed the theory of communism, how many people have died under countries in communist rule in the last 150 years? Millions. Tens of millions, 100 million. Soviet Union, probably 70 million. Hitler only killed six. He was Jewish? Yeah. He was? Andrew Carnegie, the steel magnate, multi bazillionaire, you know. Though raised as a Christian, he was the world's rich, America's richest man. He became an atheist. He wrote in his autobiography, when I, along with three, of my, three or four of my boon companions, was in a stage of doubt about theology, including the supernatural element and indeed the whole scheme of salvation through the vicarious atonement and all the fabric built upon it, I came fortunately upon Darwin's and Spencer's works. Andrew Carnegie read Darwin's book. I remember that light came as a flood and all was clear. Not only had I got rid of theology and the supernatural, but I had found the truth of evolution. That book affected a whole bunch of people. So Hutton's book came out in 1795. People started doubting the 6,000-year-old earth. Thomas Chalmers invented the gap theory, and Christians swallowed it like a pacifier. <gasps> That'll solve it. We can forget the billions of years. No need to fight against it. And then George Faber invented the day-age theory, and some Christians swallowed that one instead. Gap theory, day-age. And then Darwin's book came out, 1859, and nobody opposed it. The first thing the evolutionist has to have is billions of years. Essential. Without that, the whole theory collapses. The Bible doesn't give it to them. 75% of kids raised in Christian homes that go off to secular schools are going to reject their faith. Your parents might want to think long and hard about that before you get more worried about your kid's job than his faith. Great book about the false teachings of Hugh Ross. Bill Sardi wrote that one, Big God versus Big Science. I think it's a heresy. Both theories are her 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 heresy. Now, there are numerous scientific ways to show the Earth is not billions of years old. We'll cover those next time. But I just want to make it clear, you're not going to squeeze billions of years into the Bible. The Bible dates come out to about 4000 BC, real clearly. Nothing died before Adam sinned. So don't claim you believe the Bible and claim the Earth is billions of years old. You got, you're got straddling a fence. Get on one side or the other. Anyway, thank you for joining us. It's been a blessing here. I hope uh, this helps strengthen your faith. The Bible clearly teaches God made it in six days, about 6,000 years ago, which raises lots of questions. What about dinosaurs? What about the Ice Age? How did the light from the stars get here? That's why my seminars 
really old, really long, okay? I'm talking as fast as I can go. <laughs> We're going to cover all that when we get to it later. See you tomorrow. Bye.